Hello everyone, this is Math 6, Lesson 6-2. Six In this lesson, relating fractions, decimals, and percents, we'll learn how to write equivalent values as fractions, decimals, or percents. Let's start with stop and discuss it. The grid is shaded with blue, orange, and yellow. What part of the grid is shaded blue? What part is shaded orange? What part of the grid is shaded? Okay, so we're gonna talk about ratios, right? So first, we want to know how many tiles there are total. These are all shaded tiles, right? These are yellow, orange, and blue. Um, how many tiles are there total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tiles total horizontally. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tiles total vertically. And we want to count how many oranges there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 31, 32. 32 orange tiles. And how many blue tiles? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 blue tiles. And how many total shaded? Everything is 10 times 10 tiles. So total shaded is 100 total shaded tiles. So you can subtract 32 and 20 from 100 to get how many yellow tiles there are. Okay. So what part um, is shaded blue, orange, and shaded at all, right? So let's find the parts. For blue, let's do blue first. 20 blue tiles out of 10 total shaded would be 20% of tiles that are shaded. And orange tiles, 32 out of 100, which is 32%. And the whole, The total shaded tiles are 100 out of 100 tiles. So that's 100% shaded, okay? Focus on math practices. Write the part of the grid that is shaded yellow as a decimal and a percent. How are the decimal and the percent alike and how are they different? Okay, so yellow, how do you know how many yellow tiles there are? We're gonna subtract the parts that we already know, blue and orange, in order to find the yellow tiles. So if you find um, 100 minus 20 minus 32, that's gonna be 48 tiles. So 48 tiles out of 100 is 48%. What is the decimal? 0.48, okay? So how could you explain that? How are the decimals and percent alike? How are they different? The decimal and the percent are alike because the numeric digits are the same. You see that? 48 and 48, numeric digits are the same. So they're similar, but are they exactly the same? No, why are they different? They're different because decimal point is in a different place. There you go.
All right, so in this topic, in this um, lesson, let's think about how the fractions, decimals, and percents are related. Example one, express percents and decimals as parts of a whole. The portion of the time that Teddy spends doing homework for each subject is shown in the bar diagram. Ooh. How can you write the amount of time Teddy spends on reading or science as a fraction, decimal, and percent? So they say they want us to get um, the fraction, decimal, and percent that represents reading or science. What does that mean? Reading or science, what do you do? Reading is 30%. Science decimal is 0 0.10, uh, so that's 10%. So together, um, if he's reading or doing science, together, what's the, what's the, prop, what's the um, percentage together? Three plus uh, 30 plus 10 would be 40%, right? So if you see or, that means they're both included. So first you need to write 30% as fraction and a decimal. So 30 over 100 or three over 10. And decimal is 0 0.30. And write 0 0.10 as fraction and percent. That could be 10 over 100. And that could be a 10%. Okay, so you could rewrite them um, separately like that as well. Let's look at try it. Anna spends 0 0.45 of her homework time reading. What is 0 0.45 as a percent? Explain, how do you convert decimals into percentages? First, you write fractions. Do you know how to write fractions from decimals? How many place values do you have? 0 0.45 has the tens and the hundreds. So it has two decimal places. That means 45 is out of 100. You have two decimal places, which is equivalent to two zeros for your tens, parts of tens. And 45 out of 100 is? 45%, okay? So you can explain using words, say convert the decimal into a fraction using the decimal places, um, wait, by counting. The number decimal places. 0 0.45 has two decimal places. So in fraction, 45 out of 100. 45 out of 100 is 5%. There you go. Convince me, what relationship do you see when comparing the equivalent fraction and percent? Can you see any patterns? When comparing fraction and percent, how do you compare them? When a fraction has a denominator of 100, you can easily change that into a percentage and just compare the numerator with the percent, right? So let's write that down. When the fraction has a denominator of 100, this numerator, so the number above the fraction and the number with the percent sign are the same. Or let's say they could be that's more accurate. There you go. Okay, next page, example two. Express fractions as parts of whole. Teddy spends three over five of his homework time doing math problems. 
write three over five as a decimal and as a percent. So now we're gonna use fractions into um, a percent and a decimal. So three fifths, you could, you could literally, one way to write a decimal is you could literally divide three divided by five and use the long division to get the, the, the decimal. Or another way, you can use equivalent rate to find a percent. Three over five is equal to something over 100. And if you find this X by figuring out the number that you multiply both um, terms to get the numerator, that's your percentage because it's 60 out of 100. By definition, 60 is gonna be your percentage. Okay, so decimal 0 0.60 is equivalent to 60%. Okay, example three, use division with equivalent rates to express fractions as part of a whole. Teddy's friend Jacob spends five eighths of his homework time doing math problems. Write five eighths as a decimal and as a percent. So five eighths, now we have a different fraction. So first you can literally divide five divided by eight like that, and then find the decimal until you get no remainders, okay? You can stop when there's no remainders. If it's a repeated decimal, then it's better to use equivalent ratios to figure it out, okay? So um, you can use a decimal to write it as a fraction it has three decimal places, which means you have 10 to the power of three, which is 1,000 on the denominator. So 625 divided by 1,000, you divide both terms by, by 10 to get 100 in your denominator because you want to match 100 for your denominator in order to convert it to a percentage. So then you have 62.5, that's gonna be your percent, 62.5%, okay? So five eighths is 0 0.625, and that's equivalent to 62.5%. All right, let's look at try it um, on the bottom. Isabel spends three eighths of her homework time on reading. What is three eighths as a decimal and a percent? So this is a fraction. What is it in decimal? And what is it in percent? See if you can figure it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, in order to get decimal, you can literally divide three divided by eight. Zero, decimal point here. Um, eight times three is gonna be 24, get remainder of six, give another zero. Eight times seven is 56, get remainder of four, give another zero. And eight times five is 40, so get a remainder of zero. Your decimal is 0 0.375, what is that in percent? 3, 0.375 has three decimal places, so that's in fraction 375 over 1,000. You divide both terms by 10 so that you get 100 in the denominator and 37.5 on the numerator. And that's, that means your percent is 37.5%, okay? So those are your answers. All right, so that was our lesson. To summarize, you can use division and equivalent ratios to express fractions, decimals, and percents in equivalent forms. Um, so keep in mind how to convert between fractions, decimals, and percents. We're gonna continue learning, um, learning about percentages in the next lesson where we represent percents greater than 100 or less than one.
All right, if you have any more questions, make sure you ask Miss King in class. Um, see you in the next video. Bye.